they at, at one point went out and collected one mile of highway litter from one of the highways around Lansing and brought it into the cabinet room in Lansing to show the media that there was an issue with waste and refuse along our highway. So the bottle bill was one of the most significant that uh, we led the way in the nation with. When the Republican convention was held in Detroit in 1980, uh, my father was on the floor speaking to the people at the convention. My mother was in the street outside Cobo Hall protesting, uh, uh, but the platform hadn't accommodated women's issues the way she felt it needed to. William G. Milliken, Michigan's longest serving governor, was known for his environmental stewardship and civility in politics. During his tenure in office, from 1969 until 1983, Milliken lent critical support for Michigan's beverage container deposit law, expanded state funding for recreation and parks programs in Detroit, and signed the state's landmark Environmental Protection Act, as well as laws to protect sand dunes, control hazardous waste, and promote recycling. Milliken passed away in October 2019 in his native and beloved Traverse City. He was preceded by his wife Helen, herself a champion of environmental stewardship, and the women's rights movement. A memorial service and celebration of Governor Milliken will be held on August 6 at the Interlochen Center for the Arts. In anticipation of the event, Flo is publishing a series of short video interviews with those who knew the governor and Helen well. well I first knew Bill and Helen when Bill was running for office back in the 70s. And I thought he was a prince of a person who really cared about the environment women's issues, uh, the bottle, the deposit bill. There were so many things that he sponsored or worked on. To me, he was the epitome of what a public servant is. Not a politician, but a public servant. Someone who thought generations down the road uh, and said, if we do this policy today, it'll mean this much to our children and to their children and to their children. And that was the way he thought. And that's the important thing. So his legacy lives on. They came into office at a time where uh, strict environmental regulation was really needed. And they had many opportunities to shape the landscape, especially in Michigan, but in the United States above all. Um, I think their work to uh, develop uh, the bottle return policy in Michigan was truly incredible. That's shaped everyone here's lives. I mean, I wouldn't be returning bottles every other work week if it weren't because of them. And of course, now that we have an incentive, I think that's incredible. Um, I think that the work that they did on the Wetlands Protection Act was phenomenal, uh, as well as the Environmental Protection Act uh, really served to shape uh, with the way that legislation is unfolding now. The name of the biography is uh... William G. Milliken, Michigan's Passionate Moderate. And the reason for that subtitle about Passionate Moderate is that most people seem to think that moderate politics is without any true conviction or feeling. It's sort of in the mushy middle. But for him, being a moderate was a very intense and fierce belief that uh, by being moderate in the middle, he could craft policies that could benefit everybody. From what I've gathered, Milliken was able to really put aside party lines um, in favor of just all protecting these resources that we all share, no matter what party you are. Um, and I think that's super important, especially to this generation who does, may not see that as often in politics. Um, Milliken really, he was, he cared about people. Him and Helen were at the forefront of LGBTQ plus um, protections, women's rights. They were feminists before it was cool and before it was cool and trendy. They were caring about people and protecting those people's rights and I think that's super important to hear about in this generation where you know everything is so divided that there are people who are doing th this work for people and these shared re protecting these shared resources for all of us. I think one of my favorite stories of, of Bill Milliken was um, you know when he was governor he would come home on weekends and who wouldn't when you live on the base of the old Mission Peninsula and looking out over West Bay and I think he drew, he got a lot of energy, positive energy, uh, and just being recharged, uh, recharging his batteries when he would come 
visit the old Mission Peninsula where his home is and then go hiking at places like where we are right now. You, you Google Bill Milliken, Google the family. They have been pillars for the Traverse City community. I mean, his grandfather owned this great store that once was the Millican's department store. Um, he was, his, his grandfather I believe was mayor of Traverse City, like myself, and, and, and they started out really you know, supporting the city of Traverse City and the natural resources and the people that live here. Bill Millican was an American hero in my estimation. He was a war hero and he flew 45 missions as a gunner in Europe in a B-24. Um, many close calls, he almost uh, died a couple times in some bad accidents with the airplanes. Uh, he said in, uh, he stated the one time I believe that he, he wouldn't really want to have to do war again, but he really wouldn't have missed it either because it made him believe that he could, he would not be afraid of anything after that. He, and he tried to do as much good as he could in his life. Well, an interesting thing about one of the missions is that uh, during a, a, a raid over, they were doing a bombing run in Europe, and there were a bunch of uh, German uh, Messerschmitt planes attacking their, their airplane. He looked out and he saw another group of airplanes coming up, and it, it happened to be the, a bunch of P-51s, but they were uh, the Tuskegee, Tuskegee Airmen, which was the all-black um, unit flying P-51s. Those airplanes diverted the Germans and saved uh, Milliken's airplane, basically. Uh, the interesting thing is that Mary Young was part of the Tuskegee Air Group. He didn't fly, apparently, but he was part of that, that group. And that was an, uh, an immediate uh, relationship. It caused an immediate relationship between the two, which really helped Detroit and the governor. Bill and Helen both had a very impressive capacity to connect with people of all ages and even with young people. And I think that's partly because they were so broad-minded and non-judgmental in their approach, but also both of them had very lively senses of humor and they could pick up on um, funny little quirks in situations which I think especially young people found it endearing and made them both more approachable.